This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Fresh Books. Welcome to another episode of Film Rights Epic Summer, an actual final episode talking about my latest short film, UFO Yeah. In just three days, Seth Worley's latest will be released alongside of his first behind the scenes episode. But today for our last episode, I'll be passing it off to the incredibly talented Mary Poplin who did a few touch up shots for the film. Because although the makeup work in our film was pretty fantastic, I thought due to our extreme schedule, there were a few things that we let slide because we knew we could fix them in post, which is never the way I like to go, but we did have more time in post than we had at the location. So I'll shut up now and let Mary show us how she tracked and fixed some small issues in Mocha. Hi guys, I'm Mary Poplin from Imagineer Systems and we're gonna be going over how to use Mocha Import Plus and Mocha Tracks inside of Nuke for Roto Paint. And as you can see, we have some pretty severe makeup challenges to fix in this shot. In this video, I'm covering a breakdown of tracking the chin here and also painting in Nuke. So we're gonna draw an X line around this area of the chin we're gonna align our surface tool to our plane because we track planes inside of Mocha. Okay, so that means think of the object in terms of low poly models and aligning the surface will help you see what the track is doing. We're gonna track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective because perspective is happening in this shot. Now, if we run into any problems, we can change these parameters at any time and it'll actually help us adjust our track. Most people understand translation, scale, and rotation, but what's shear? Well, shear is that same sort of movement, but in X and Y, okay, just like that. And then perspective is the addition of Z space when we track. So we're gonna be tracking how this chin is moving in Z space. That's gonna be really important for locking down the area that we're trying to track. So let's just hit track forward. Now, what you're gonna notice is that even though we have a lot of motion blur, Mocha is a planar tracker, and so it's looking at all of the texture inside of that spline when it tracks, because it tracks a pattern of pixels as they move relative to one another. And it doesn't matter that we're having blur, because Mocha's still just tracking that pixel motion. That's how we get our tracking data. From here, we're going to end up tracking backwards, and again, we're still going to be looking at this texture. We're probably going to have to move the shape over to the side of the face in order to get a good track where the shadows come on. So let's watch what happens when we track with this shape. What you're going to see is you're going to see the shadows distort Mocha's track because of the pixel motion. The shadows will overpower the pixel motion moving in this plane and we'll have to adjust our shape. So you see how that comes off? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our parameters inside of our shape and we're going to use those to track. So we look for the last area of good data, okay, and then we are going to move our shape over to the side of the face and we're going to continue to track backwards and we can move it back and turn perspective off to track a difficult area on the side of the face but just like any experiment it doesn't work exactly so what we're going to do is we're going to try to track a different part of his face and see if we get any better results this is the basic troubleshooting breakdown of how do you fix a track that's going bad we're going to end up just tracking translation only and seeing what we get and we end up getting a much nicer track okay but it's still popping a little bit so what we're going to do is we're just going to drag that over to the side of the face and keep tracking and then we're going to drag it back once that shadow is sufficiently gone using translation only and we're going to keep moving our shape around our shadows until we get to a part where i'm confident we can move back to his chin and continue tracking perspective so we're going to keep tracking backwards from here what we end up with is a pretty decent track on the side of his face that tracks around the shadow problem and still accounts for his mouth movement. Now this is gonna be really important because we have to lock down this track really solid in order to have a nice stabilized area inside of Nuke. To get this to Nuke, we're gonna to go to export tracking data and hit Nuke corner pin. Then we hop back over to Nuke and we click on our read node. We click on our Mocha Import Plus stabilized view and it builds a comp for us. Now from here, we just double click our stabilized node and we click from clipboard. What that will do is that will bring our corner pin in so that we can put roto paint on top of it. And you can see that that area is locked down and I can paint on it inside of Nuke as if it were a Photoshop still frame. Okay, but instead of pulling from one frame, it's gonna pull from frames over time. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this little dot here in the corner of our stabilized view and close the rest of our nodes, okay? And now we're gonna go tab and find a roto paint node. We're going to select our clone tool. We're gonna change our brush size, okay? And then we're gonna hit control and offset our paint selection based on the angle of the shadow on the chin, okay? And the reason we're doing that is because if we match this angle, our paint 
will be less noticeable uh, because when you have to paint something that's on shadows, it's going to be really difficult to uh, make that invisible. From there, we just create all our strokes, select all our strokes. We go to the clone lifetime and we go single frame to all frames. And now this will pull from every single frame that's inside of Nuke. Okay, we're just going to copy and paste an O flow here to go ahead and match some of the motion blur of this shot. And then we're going to make a merge by hitting M and we're going to composite this onto the rest of our tree. If we do this enough times for enough patches, they all can comp together and we'll end up with a wonderful paint that looks just like this. So that is the power of Mocha Import Plus with Mocha Tracks inside of Nuke. You can find a 20 minute long breakdown of this entire project in our videos section on www.imagineersystems.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and good luck on your next paint job. FreshBooks makes things simple, but their specialty is to make your life easier when it comes to invoicing, getting paid, and tracking expenses. If you're doing any freelance work or have a business of any kind on the side or full time, you need to know about FreshBooks. It's an online tool and the absolute easiest way to get all your accounting done super fast. Everyone dreads doing stuff like sending invoices and getting your numbers straight, but that's where FreshBooks will make it really simple. Your clients pay you online, your expenses are automatically tracked as you spend, and all the little details about cash flow are in one place so you always know where you stand. It'll even let you see the full history of any invoice so you'll always know if your client has looked at your invoice or not. So head over to freshbooks.com slash film riot and don't forget to enter film riot in the how did you hear about us section. Thank you to Mary for doing that for us. Of course, this is a trimmed down version. If you want to see the full in-depth 20 plus minute version, check that out right here. Definitely worth a watch. And as always, you can find the lovely people and companies involved with making our film happen in the notes below. And don't forget to swing back to our channel in three days for Seth Worley's new short film.